we shall discuss about the cosmic rays what are cosmic rays how are they found what is the history behind the discovery of the cosmic rays so first of all let us see the definition of the cosmic rays so cosmic rays are the high energy radiations so cosmic rays are generally the high energy radiations or particles which are coming somewhere outside the earth and are continuously bombarding the earth's atmosphere so these particles were not known for quite a long time and they were thought at from where these cosmic ray particles where these cosmic ray radiations were coming and how they were bombarding the particle atmosphere so let us see what is the history behind the discovery of the cosmic rays so first we know that the gold leaf electroscope is used to tell about the charges okay so what happened some uh, some time ago uh, they kept a charged gold leaf electroscope like that only and what they noticed that there were no charged particles present near the electroscope they did not allow any of the charged particles to come near the electroscope so that the so that the electri uh, gold leaf electroscope could collapse or they could be opened up but what they found that the gold leaf electroscope leaves automatically uh, discharged and and it was discharging continuously and at a later time the gold leaf uh, electroscope was completely discharged so they thought initially that there might be some alpha particle beta particles or the gamma radiations that could be emitted by some radioactive sources so the alpha beta or the gamma rays were the major reason thought for the discharge of the electric gold leaf uh, electroscope but to overrule the uh, presence of the alpha beta gamma by the radioactive sources some other methods were also employed that why did the gold leaf electroscope discharged so it was assumed that the discharge could be due to the presence of alpha beta particles or the gamma rays that was being emitted by the radioactive sources but the research was conducted how the radiations varied with the effect of that whether the electric uh, gold leaf electroscope was discharged only at a particular place was the gold leaf discharge taking place at height was it varying with altitude was it varying with the direction changes in the east west south north direction so how the change of the electric discharge varied for the gold leaf electroscope that was a major concern and the observations were made at all the locations at a particular height at high above the mountains at a lower depth inside deep inside the water so many research were carried out to study what was the effect so where what were the particles what were the charged particles that were causing the discharge of the gold leaf electroscope so because the radiations were coming from the outside the earth it was assumed that let us study the effect of the altitude let us study the effect of latitude let us study the effect of the east west direction which was named as the azimuth effect so now we shall take into consideration the altitude effect and also side by side learn the history behind the discovery of the cosmic rays so we have the altitude effect so what do you mean by altitude effect altitude effect is that how the cosmic rays varied with the height so how the cosmic ray intensity was varying with the height at a specific latitude that was named as the altitude effect so what happened that the researchers sent the airplanes and the balloons high up in the atmosphere and they were so high that it was about 118 18000 meter or it could be one uh, it could be 18 kilometer it could be about then they soon they sent it to 200 kilometers high up in the atmosphere to study the effect of the uh, discharge variation and the balloons were sent so high that they wanted 
to isolate isolate the effect of the uh, charged particles being created by the radioactive sources so then the self recording electroscopes were sent through these balloons and the airplanes and the recording stations were also located at the higher altitudes so what they found what were the observations that they found when they had sent these electroscopes or the balloons high up in the um, atmosphere so they found that the this was this is the variation of the cosmic ray intensity with respect to the altitude in kilometers so what they found they found that the uh, uh, shape of the curve that the what what the graph was telling about was same the outcome was same for all the magnetic latitudes that with at what latitude they are observing it so the basic inference was the same the basic curve nature was the same they initially found that up to a distance of 700 meters <coughs> the first the intensity decreased then beyond 700 meters the intensity started increasing so we can see that we have not shown here the initial effect of the decrease in the intensity till 700 meters so we are just projecting that initially uh, from uh, we can say that from 1 kilometer we are taking that the initially the decrease is not shown but then the in graph starts increasing cosmic ray starts increasing up to a height of 20 to 22 kilometer and then beyond that the cosmic ray intensity decreased so this pattern was uh, shown for all the latitudes at whichever latitude they used to calculate the cosmic ray intensity with respect to altitude this is for 3 degree north altitude sorry latitude this is for 38 degree north latitude and this is for 60 degree north latitude and you can see here that as the value of the latitude increased the cosmic ray intensity also increased but the behavior that the cosmic ray intensity showed with the change in the altitude was the same that initially it increased up to a height of altitude of 20 to 22 kilometers and then the pattern started decreasing so what they concluded that the uh, charged gold leaf electroscope was discharging the charge uh, sorry the charge so what they concluded they concluded that the charge gold leaf electroscope discharge increased with the increase in the altitude as the altitude increased the discharge discharge increased then in 1912 to 14 Kohorstel and the Nobel Prize winner Hess where he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1936 for this discovery uh, he they found that the ionization decreased up to 700 meters then they started increasing the discharge started increasing up to a height of 20 to 25 kilometer and beyond the distance altitude of 20 to 25 kilometer the intensity again started falling decreasing and they showed the presence of the penetrating rays that could be coming somewhere outside the earth's atmosphere and they are in, they are continuously bombarding the earth's atmosphere so this was the first conclusion that the Kohorstan and Nobel uh, Prize winner Hess had given in 1912-14. So, we can, I have already told you that the, all the curves corresponding to a particular latitude reach a maximum, not at the top of the atmosphere, but quite below the top. Means that not at the maximum is not reached at 30 kilometers. If you are locating the research station at 30 kilometer altitude, so the um, maximum is not located at 30 kilometer, it is quite below it. Okay. So the cosmic row intensity at a given altitude increases with increase in the geomagnetic latitude, maximum intensity at 60 degree north. Means at a particular altitude, you have 20 kilometer. At 3 degree latitude, the intensity is about 50, but at 38 degree north latitude, where the latitude is increased, but for the same altitude, what happens? The intensity has increased to about 125, and when the latitude further increases and becomes maximum at 60 degree north latitude, the intensity of the cosmic ray is nearly equal to 200. So, what we see that for a particular altitude and with the increase in the latitude, the cosmic ray intensity also increased. So, 
the maximum position this maximum position shows that the maximum position is not at the maximum altitude it is quite below the top of the atmosphere it is less than 5% of the maximum altitude so the maximum position indicates that the cosmic ray intensity at the top of the atmosphere is less than that occurring about 5% below it so this was the conclusion of the altitude effect what the researchers found with the change in the height with the height and these were the result and this is the history what the Kohorstan and Nobel prize winner has had discovered and similarly we will see what was the various changes that were observed with the latitude effect and with the change of the east west direction whether the discharge was more at the equator whether it was more at the poles so we shall discuss with the latitude effect and the east-west direction effect.